What's up, Bandana Gang, and welcome back to my channel. Wow, that was a mess. That was a little flat. Wow. Still flat. But anyways, um, believe it or not, I, do, I don't... Oh, sorry. Boop fix. Oh. in the field. Everybody in the field. I don't even know how I still have energy right now because I literally just recorded this entire or well, half of the story time that I'm telling you today with barely any storage. So I had to delete literally almost everything on my phone. You're welcome for this tea. Um, sacrifices, you know, all 2020. Today's video, first ever, well, yeah, because I, yeah. Today's video is a story time. I did a story time before, mm, maybe like two years ago, but it was like a mukbang and it was trash. This one is gonna be a real story time, like, you know, like real YouTubers post. So I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this because your girl loves story times. I watch them all of the time and I always got some tea for real, for real. I just keep it all inside because, you know, I'm a loyal Taurus and, you know, I keep people's business. And unless I'm involved, then I'm not saying anything. But in this case, I was definitely involved even though I was an angel. <laughs> I got to tell you all this because it's just too funny. So this story takes place when I was probably like 22 and... When I was 22, around this time, I was not working in anything like like a real job, like not a real nine to five, part-time gigs. So at this point in time, I was working a part-time gig at a local convenience store called what? Turkey Hill. Everybody in Harrisburg that is watching this video, Turkey Hills are everywhere. For the people that are watching this that live in Florida, Turkey Hills are the Circle K. So you already know what I mean by that. It's just a convenience store that everybody got. So just like Circle K and Turkey Hill, both of them have crazy ass people that are around. You know, I just want to let y'all know that it is a hell of an experience to work as an employee at a convenience store and as a female. Like, you get hit on so much. Like, there's been so many times where I would literally just be minding my own business, you know, filling up the coffee bar, making sure the coffee's nice and hot for the breakfast rush. And I get back to my, you know, my register i ring someone up somebody writing an email down on the, on the receipt that i just gave them telling me to hit them up later like sir i don't know your name but <laughs> Break, get that head, then leave. <laughs> like it will be scenarios like that a lot of shit happens at this store and store and i really didn't think that anything was going to happen that is that i'm about to tell you i really didn't expect this to happen at this store now for anybody that knows me or wants to know my work ethic, A1. I don't play no radio games when it comes to my name being on anything. So with my name being on anything, it's going to be done right. You need the motherfucking bathroom done, it's going to smell like bleach. I'm not even going to fucking complain about it. You need me to go into the freezer and put some ice cream and front face everything, I'll fucking do that. You need me to take out that nasty ass trash that's by all the motherfucking gas pumps. I'll do that too. That's just always been my work ethic because there are things that we have to do that we don't want to do. So, yeah, that's just another little background of like my work ethic. So, I don't play at all. And I say that because it's very important to this story. My interactions with the co workers, though, like at Turkey Hill, it was cool as shit. Like, I really had no complaints with nobody that worked there. Like, everybody I got along with. Um, when I started out, there was people that were there, of course, before me that taught me the ropes. And I saw people that came there after me and taught them the ropes. Let them know how to use a lottery machine to get these numbers right so these people don't cut y'all out because people don't play with lottery. <laughs> how to feel like the, the soda uh, fountain, the slushies, where you do certain stuff, paperwork, stuff like that. How to order um, tobacco products and stuff like that. Like, it was just so much stuff that, you know, you have to learn. But it's really easy. It was easy-ass money. And honestly, they wasn't even paying a lot anyway. So, y'all need to not ask for too damn much when y'all ain't paying that too damn much. So, <laughs> in that order. But, um, anyway. So, when I was working there, there was this new boy that ended up working at the store. And we will call him. Oh, I'm a real story timer because, you know, I'm coming up with cold names. <laughs> um, we will call him victor so it was this guy named victor that came in and he had an interview and the day that i was working there i was working register and i noticed him when he came in he was really really nice told us that he had an interview with our manager went and grabbed her that was that 
I would say maybe like a week or two later, he showed up at the job and I found out that he got the job. So when I met him, I was like, hey, Victor, it's nice to see you. I'm so glad that you're going to be working with us. Like when I met him, he just had a really nice smile on his face. He just seemed really, really nice. He just was like a really nice guy. So I was happy to see that he was able to get this job because he had told me at that time that he was really hustling too and that he had another job. So this would have been his second one. Two strings of income. Let's get it. And a brother. So I was definitely here for that. When I, when I started working with Victor... I did notice that some of the guy employees, they were like looking certain ways sometimes. I guess it was always like a male testosterone thing to see what nigga was going to get all the bitches at work or what nigga was going to get all the bitches attention. I feel like it's like that at every single job. It's just like the pink elephant in the room. I don't fucking know. But with him, it just seemed like he wasn't the one that was trying to pull everybody. He just had something about him to where he was just so funny, very charismatic to where it's like you like his energy. It's not about you wanting to smush him. It was just about you wanting to enjoy his spirit. At least well, that's how I felt. Like with him, because I'm a funny person and he's a funny person. Like when I say funny, like not to say that I'm a comedian, but like we have a great sense of humor and we understand each other's humor. So it's, you know, two, two like-minded people. So eventually, like, when I started working shifts with this dude, I would be so hyped to work with him because I knew that I was really going to have a good day because he was always full of so much positive energy. Like, it would be to the point where I would start to look at my schedule and be like, oh, I'm working with Victor today. Yeah. It's going to be a chill ass day. Everybody got they, that work buddy where it's like, okay, if I work with them, it's going to be cool. And if I work with such and such, it's going to be boring or whatever the case may be. So that was my work, nigga. Like, that was my, that was my friend. We were friends. Two peas in a pod. At least that's what I thought. I, I thought we were, you know, just friends. So this one day, <laughs> me and Victor, we was working together. And I was actually trying to do more, like, as far as trying to get more hours and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to do the freezer exactly how they wanted to do it. Because at this time, people have been messing up how they were front-facing ice creams and stuff for you to grab as a customer. I don't know how the fuck you messed that up, but my manager kept bitching about it. So I wanted to take the lead role on that so I could get some more hours. So I knew that I was going to start this project tomorrow, but I really wanted to go in there just to see like what's in there, what we might need. And then the, the next day I would get up on it and I already know what I got to do grab what needs to be grabbed and that's that's just what it be i was able to do everything that i had to do that night um and it was just me and victor and the, at one point victor did come back there we were laughing about something i don't know what it was but at one point in time victor did come back there to check on me but everything was cool he held down the front of the store like and this was like really like around the time when he started to like have some independence with himself and i really trusted him to be at the register by himself so i was cool he was doing his thing and i was doing my thing we knocked that night out no problems and i was with, with my work buddy so i didn't have no concerns so then the next day i'll come into work and my boss was like that she wanted to have a meeting with me and i'm like a meeting about what like and that's just like even say it like that but what do we have a meeting for at a convenience store like there's nothing to have a meeting about it's hey hey yay how you doing oh i'm doing good here's your schedule like i I just didn't understand it. So she was like that she wanted to talk to me. So I was like, okay, that's a little weird. Again, my work ethic is on pizzoid. So are you giving me a promotion? Because we clearly can't talk about anything that I did wrong. So we go to the back. This is, is barely a fucking office. It's like a fucking hallway, to be honest with you, because it's so packed tight back there. They barely give you an office. We barely have a damn break room. It's either you go outside or you go in a damn parking lot to go eat your lunch. If your shift's even that long enough, because some people didn't even have eight hour shifts to even have a lunch. But we went to the back where her little desk was at and she was like, that she really needed to talk to me. And like just her energy, her vibe was like weird. Like she made me feel uncomfortable. And I'm like, bruh, if you about to fire me, let's just stop with all the bullshit. Cause I, I've, I've already just came up in here. You didn't have to bring me all the way out here for me to get fired. Like I'm just already thinking years ago and like, what does she want to talk about? So she was like, yeah, um, so the other night, you know, um, I know this, that you, of course, you were telling me that you wanted to take on the role, for, you know, the front face, everything in the freezer to make sure everything was nice and tidy. And I was like, yeah, I was like, yesterday I got a pregame, you know, I pregame what I was doing yesterday. 
wrote down everything that I need to make sure that all the, the labels and everything's on pop, everything's on point, that ain't nobody gonna have no problems because mm -hmm, I'm perfect. So she's like, yeah, you did do that. But I did notice, um, you know, I was just checking out the cameras, checking out the footage, and I did notice that when you walked back to go to the freezer, that Victor was walking behind you. And after a few minutes, we noticed that he walked into the freezer with you and you guys were in there for a few minutes and then he walked out, but you were still in there. So it took you a while to leave. I still had a few questions. I'm not saying that you did anything, but it did just look a little suspicious. And I did talk to Victor about it. I mean, he's seeing that nothing happened, but I just wanted to run it by you just to see what you think. So I'm like, two two things. One is, sis knew me for a couple months by now, so I don't even know what she was thinking. And number two was, you trying to get Victor a brother to to not have no job? Like I'm not falling for for the for the okie doke. So not only did I, of course, tell her the truth that it wasn't true, and I clearly just told y'all, me and him were talking while I was walking her, and I was telling him what I was doing. I'm, when I'm walking, I'm telling him exactly what I'm going to do when I'm back there. We kiki, we cat cat. And he did have a moment where he was standing with the door open talking to me, but he wasn't physically standing in there for minutes, and we were alone doing things together like the insinuation to me was so disrespectful and so annoying that she would think that that's what we were doing on our time like i said i don't play them games and when it's anything has my name on it i'm not about to play no games with nobody and i'm about to get everything that i have to do done and execute it effectively and perfectly because i'm perfect <sighs> so yeah not only did she think that, but the entire store thought that me and him was dealing for months. He ended up getting another job and they still thought that me and him were dealing. Probably still to this day. So yeah, like, and then eventually we stopped getting on the schedule together. She started making sure that we weren't on the schedule on the same days. So I used to talk to other coworkers to see what Victor was doing, like just to make sure that he was cool. I mean, eventually one day when he came and he got his last check, I talked to him and I let him know, I just want to let you know that I let that bitch know that you are not that kind of man, that you never try to push up on me and that you're not disrespectful. And I don't know what she was thinking, but just I just want to let you know that I never put no bug in her ear. She assumed that her ass wanted to play Super Spy and watch the cameras for no apparent reason. So what's the sitch? Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. It's crazy. Everybody thought that we was dealing with each other like for like a minute after that like it took some convincing for me to be like y'all like come on y'all know i don't play them games i come in here i get this money and i leave i might bag a couple of niggas but it ain't my fault i'm not about to do that with you know a co-worker i have some you know some class <sighs> but yeah that's my little story time i hope you guys enjoyed this video please make sure that you like share and subscribe for more videos more crazy ass stories like this because i definitely have more i told you guys i'm a open book well kind of i'm not an open book but i'm a book that got some secrets and i might you know spill a little and i'll make sure to always never tell the person's name um <laughs> shout out to victor um victor um is actually somebody that just liked one of my cutest photos that i just posted if you want to show us some love i will make sure to post it somewhere around here i look really cute and white i just just want to you know show you guys that that cute ass picture but victor is one of the people that like this picture and i hope that he sees this video because i wonder if he recalls that i mean it was years ago i know he's like cute and happily in you know his relationship and whatnot but victor was that boy and i really liked working with him i just felt like they were trying to play my boy and y'all wasn't about to sit here trying to make it seem like he was trying to push up on me when it was other employees that was trying to push up on me that was the whole relationships but i'm gonna keep that to myself <laughs> i will see you guys in the next video Woo!